Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's John, it's good to see you. So today is one of my absolute favorite days of the year. I love Thanksgiving. I think it's such a awesome time to look back and see all the great things that God's done. It's an amazing time to get together. I mean, hey, who doesn't love Thanksgiving food? I don't really like turkey that much. What's funny is in our family, uh, especially with my wife, uh, we like to do Thanksgiving chicken wings. They're the best. I love the way that she cooks chicken wings. And so instead of turkey, which like, Seriously, everybody makes it so dry, unless you're gonna deep fry a turkey, which is the best kind of turkey in the world. But if you're not gonna do that, might as well do chicken wings because there's nothing better. But today it has me reflecting on some of the ways that the gospel should shape the reality of how we live during the holidays. It should shape the way that we think about Thanksgiving. It should shape the way that we think about Christmas. It should shape everything in our lives. And so as I was reflecting this morning, I wrote them down in my journal and I kind of wanted to share them with you. So the first thing as I was reflecting on how the gospel shapes our Thanksgiving is, I know for me, the way that I'm wired, I'm wired to be a negative person. I'm, I'm wired to see the problems in things. I'm wired to see what's gonna go wrong. And thank God, you know, the Lord has used that and shaped me to kind of be able to be a problem solver because of that. But just naturally, I can be a bit cynical. I can be, um, I can see the glasses half empty all the time. And reflecting on the gospel helps me to remember that I don't deserve anything in this life. Actually, what I deserve in life is going to hell. I deserve to have my sin punished. I'm a broken, messed up person. I've done terrible things in my life. And the fact that I have anything good, anything good in my life at all means that God has been gracious and God has been patient with me. And if you're anything like me and you kind of know your own brokenness, then you can look at, at the good things in your life. And instead of being cynical, instead of being critical, you can actually be thankful because God has been overwhelmingly generous with you. Because the truth is, we are still the same type of people that if you look back in Genesis and you see when God uh, flooded the earth, we have the same broken heart as those people did back then. Thank the Lord he promised that he would not flood the earth anymore, but we still have those same tendencies to sin just like they did. And so every single thing we get is a gift from God. Actually, Genesis 8 says this, verse 20 says this, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike every living creature as I've done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. And so I, I live with that reality that I don't deserve anything good. I have the same exact heart as those broken people back from Genesis 8. And anything in my life then is a gift from God. And so we can be thankful this Thanksgiving. The second thing I was reflecting on was the fact that a generous heart is the fruit of a thankful heart. I remember growing up and going to see my uncle Danny up in Ohio. He's my, not my, can't say favorite uncle. Are you allowed to say favorite uncle? He was probably my most fun uncle. My uncle Basil was right there with him. But my uncle Danny, uh, every Thanksgiving, he, I mean, he was a pretty wealthy guy. Like he was really, really successful. And every single Thanksgiving would come around and I remember he would wake up really early in the morning and he would go down and he'd volunteer at a soup kitchen. He'd kind of gather all the homeless guys um, that were around that city in Ohio. And it was really cool to me to see how generous he was because he was thankful for how God had blessed him in his life. And to this day, it impacts me. I mean, it's, it still has an impact on my heart that Though my uncle is successful and you know well off and doing good in life, uh, he was still really, really generous with broken people around him on a day where there's a lot of sorrow. I mean, could you imagine being um, homeless during the holidays? Could you imagine what that would be like? The loneliness that you would feel, the, the um, kind of, you're away from the rest of culture, away from the rest of people, and it would have to be a pretty broken and pretty heartbreaking time. And so the fruit of any of us Having a real thankful heart is having a generous heart. And as I look back on my life and I'm, I'm kind of looking through the years, the years where I feel the most satisfied and the most um, kind of thankful and pleased are the years where I've given the most away. It's so easy to get caught up in wanting to gain more and get more and hold on to more. But the truth is the more that I've given away, the more that I felt um, good and happy and satisfied in those seasons. I think it's because we weren't made to be selfish. Yes, 
sin came into the world. We talked about Genesis already. Sin came into the world and it broke everything. We were not meant to be selfish people. We were meant to be givers, to be producers, to help other people. And when we do that, it is really, really good for our souls. And Paul knew this truth. When he was speaking in Acts 20, he's speaking to the Ephesian elders. And um, he says this to him. He says, in all things, I've shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. As you look back on this past year, see all the ways that Christ has been so generous to you to offer you salvation, to give you a roof over your head, to give you the car that you drive and the job that you have and the family that you have. God has been so generous to you. Let the thankfulness for those things overflow in generosity to others. I think by doing that, that's one of the main ways that we can see the light of the gospel push back the darkness in our neighborhoods, which leads us to this third point that says this. Every holiday is a missional opportunity. Like I said, holidays are seasons of just mountaintop, awesome, amazing highs, but they also come with some of the lowest valleys in the world. I mean, think about all of the families that lost someone this year. I mean, especially with COVID stuff going around, like people have lost loved ones and it is heartbreaking. And as they're walking into these holiday seasons, this is the first one without grandma. This is the first one without maybe their son or their daughter or their mom or dad. And there is so much heartbreak in loss in those things, especially during the joyous times of the holidays. And as people who are the aroma of Christ, we have a chance to be missional with every single person that we meet. We can have hard conversations. We can be a shoulder for somebody to cry on. We can be the light of God in someone's life, and we can be a presence of joy at the the bed of somebody who's just crying over the loss that they've had. And the holiday season is such a good time to, to make sure that we are digging in. We're not pulling back and being selfish. We're digging in as the people of God and we are actively seeking out areas that we can serve other people. Because the truth is, if people don't know the gospel, if people don't know the grace of Jesus Christ, they will spend eternity separated from him. And that is not a good thing. In this holiday, we have a chance to kind of uh, jump in the way of that freight train and try and see people come to know Jesus as their savior. I love that Romans says this when thinking about being missional on the holiday, this is really important. It says this, Romans 10, 13, and 14, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is where you and I come in. It says, how then will they call on him who they've not believed? And how will they believe in him who they never heard? And how will they hear without someone preaching? This is such a cool time for us to be the people preaching the gospel, not just to our neighbors, which is so important, but also to our family members because everybody has that family member that comes over for Thanksgiving and they're awkward and it's weird and, and you feel uncomfortable, but those are people created in the image of God. They bear the Imago Dei, the image of God, and they need the message of the gospel. And this moment, this year, is your chance to be a light of the gospel, to preach back to them the fact that God loves sinful people, the fact that Christ uh, bore all their sins on the cross and was raised from the dead to prove that he actually could forgive sins. And we saw him walk out of the tomb to give us new life. This is the year for you to be a spreader of the gospel. So what can you do? How can you be missional? I think one of the easiest ways, one of the best ways in the world, look, I'm Baptist and we love food, okay? You can go and bring your neighbor a pumpkin pie and just say, hey, can we have a piece of pumpkin pie and hang out? I wanna to get to know you a little bit better. I guarantee you, if you say that and you're just down to earth with it, not like holier than thou and just a total weird Christian, if you are just humble and loving and offer this to them, I know that they'll invite you into their home and this is the chance for you to build relationship, to meet needs, and to love people well. Because as I said, every single holiday season is a chance to be missional. So Thanksgiving is awesome. It's great for the food, it's better for the relationships, and ultimately we are looking back and glorifying God for the incredible things he's done in our lives. And I have a list really quick of five things that I am so, so thankful for this year. The first one is, like we said earlier, that God has been gracious and patient with me. I deserve nothing. I have done um, things in my life that I regret and am ashamed of, and God has been patient with me, and the same is true for you, I'm sure, but God, God being patient with me and giving me um, second and third and fourth chances and 
constantly drawing me in by his grace. It is just, I'm overwhelmed with thankfulness for the fact that God is a patient and a loving God. The second thing I'm super thankful for this year is my wife and my kids. I could do none of this without my wife. I mean, the the, the fact that I have a YouTube channel, my wife fought for it. She wanted me to do it. She, she asked me to do it. She begged me to do it. And eventually I was just like, yeah, absolutely. I would love to. I don't, I don't know anybody whose spouse supports them and believes in them more than my wife. Um, and so I'm really, Terry, I love you. I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for my kids. They're growing up. My son is six years old. My daughter turns three in a couple weeks, which is bonkers to me, but God has been so good with that, with just growing our family. I'm also really thankful for our church, um, Orlando Baptist Church. It has been an unbelievable blessing to grow under the leadership of uh, Dustin Janney and to just grow in generosity and grow in some of the mindset. Like um, we came out of a pretty difficult season. I'm not going to get into that stuff, but coming into this church, being loved and, and healing under these people and um, experiencing the goodness of God, I'm so so thankful that God has, has been so good to give us a loving church. And the last thing that I'm thankful for is you. <laughs> this this YouTube channel and the, the community that we've built. Like I've met and, and chatted with more of these kind of smaller YouTubers that um, are, are searching after Jesus and want to see the gospel go out and want to see the word preached. And um, we've had great comments on this channel. We had great conversations. And so this year, I am blessed by you being a part of this. Um, one of the things you could do right now is I've seen that 60% of people that watch these videos aren't actually subscribed. So if you would, take a moment real quick. Uh, I'd love to get to 200 subscribers before we get into the new year. That would be a huge blessing. But I am just blessed by the fact that God has allowed the almost 200 of us to be a family, to be... Um, walking together in Jesus and be growing together in Jesus. And so just know I love you. I'm blessed by you. I'm thankful for you. Guys, you are amazing. This is a great holiday season. Don't get caught up in all the chaos. Make sure that you're slowing down to thank God, to be missional, and to have a generous heart. These are the things that the gospel reminds me of in this Thanksgiving season. So if you want to grow in Jesus more, go ahead and click some of the other videos on my channel. There's a great one here. If you just need to be reminded of the gospel, I've had that feeling of not realizing that God really does love me, but the truth is God does love you. Guys, I love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.